one. You take that back. Get you your hand back. Back. Oh, my God. It's you a wig. Back my head. Her head is funny as she is. The tragic final days of Susan Hayward. Susan Hayward was an American actress widely known for her great performances and natural beauty. She was recognized as one of the most talented actresses of the time, and her versatility and range, having taken up roles in films of different genres. In our video today, we are going to discover more about Susan Hayward's life on and outside the big screens and how she met her tragic untimely death. So stay tuned and get to discover more about one of the best female Hollywood actresses there have been to date. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and turn on the notifications to know when we drop a new video. Susan Hayward was the youngest of the three children born to Walter Mariner and Ellen Pearson, who were both of Swedish descent. She was born on June 30, 1917, in Brooklyn, New York. Growing up, her family moved around a lot. Hence, Susan attended several different schools throughout her childhood. At age seven, she was involved in a serious car accident that left her with a fractured hip and was in a body cast for several months. She had to undergo a long recovery process, but despite the doctor's efforts, the injury left her with one leg that was an inch and a half shorter than the other. This made her walk with a limp that was very noticeable for the rest of her life, which made her self-conscious to even be seen on cameras. But Hayward didn't let this hold her back. She, in fact, used her limp to her advantage later on in her performances to bring authenticity and depth to her characters. In one of her most famous roles as Barbara Graham in I Want to Live, Susan's limp was seen as a key factor in portraying her character's desperation and vulnerability. She was said to be a bright student who loved reading, with a particular interest in poetry. As a teenager, Hayward started taking dancing lessons and developed an interest in performing. She then joined a local theater group, the Cherry Blossom Players, and began performing in plays and musicals, where her talent was quickly recognized. She was then offered a scholarship to study acting in Hollywood. However, her father didn't support her in pursuing a career in the film industry, and hence didn't allow her to go until a family friend managed to convince him that Susan had a great talent and potential. He finally agreed and let her pursue her dream. When Susan got to Hollywood, she began studying acting at the Hollywood Playhouse and quickly gained a reputation as a talented and hardworking actress. She got her first film role in 1937 in the musical comedy Hollywood Hotel, where she played a radio singer. Despite the role being small, it was an important stepping stone in her career, which created more film opportunities for her. Throughout the 1940s, Susan appeared in a number of films like Bojest, 1939, Young and Willing, 1943, and And Now Tomorrow released in 1944. Her breakthrough role was in 1947, when she starred as a disillusioned nightclub singer in the film Smash Up, The Story of a Woman. Her great performance earned her recognition and her first Academy Award nomination for Best Actress, and also established her as a major talent in Hollywood. Susan went on to appear in a number of successful films throughout the 1950s and 1960s. Some of the notable films she appeared in are With a Song in My Heart, 1952, a biographical film about the life of singer and actress Jane Froman. In the film, Hayward played the role of Jane and delivered an emotional and touching performance that earned her a third Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. David and Bathsheba is an epic American biblical drama film directed by Henry King and starring Gregory Peck and Susan Hayward, which was released in 1951. The film tells the story of King David's affair with Bathsheba, which leads to a bad ending for both of them. Hayward played Bathsheba, a beautiful woman who falls for David Gregory Peck, while still married to one of his soldiers. The film gets into detail about the passion and forbidden love between the two and all the political and personal consequences of their affair. The film was a great success and earned four Academy Award nominations and became the top-grossing film in 1951. Susan's performance was praised, with many being amazed by her beauty and emotional range. The film I'll Cry Tomorrow, 1955, a biographical film based on the life of actress and singer Lillian Roth also earned Susan Hayward an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. And the film we initially mentioned, I Want to Live, was released in 1958, where she played the role of Barbara Graham, earned her the Academy Award for Best Actress. The film was praised for its portrayal of Graham's life in criminal justice system, with Hayward's performance being regarded as one of the best in her career. 
Earlier in 1954, Susan's contract at Warner Bros. came to an end after spending over a decade there. Around the same time, she had to deal with the loss of her father, Walter Mariner. But despite these challenges, she was determined to continue her career and took some time to focus on improving her skills and accent. After a few months, she signed a new seven-year contract with Paramount Pictures, which was a major turning point in her career since it gave her more control over her roles and allowed her to work with some of the greatest directors and writers in Hollywood. Susan's work at Paramount was marked by a series of challenging roles like in The Honey Pot, where she played the role of Mrs. Sheridan, who was a rich woman who gets involved in a murder investigation. The film was a success, and her performance was singled out for praise. In Valley of the Dolls, Hayward played the role of Helen Lawson, who was an aging theater star who gets involved in a rivalry with newcomer Neely O'Hara, played by Patty Duke. The film became a cult classic and is regarded as a landmark in the history of Hollywood melodramas. In The Revengers, Susan plays Elizabeth Riley, the widow of a rancher who was murdered, and seeks revenge against the men who killed her husband. The film was a Western and box office success, and Hayward's performance was praised for its intensity. After her success in the mid-1960s, Susan began to slow down in her career, and she appeared in fewer films. Many of her roles at this time were in B-movies and low-budget productions. She decided to focus more on her personal life and spend more time with her second husband, Floyd Eaton Chockley. Unlike her first marriage, which was said to be tumultuous and full of faults, her marriage with Floyd was happier and more stable. Her first husband was Jess Barker, who married her in 1944 and welcomed fraternal twin boys, Gregory and Timothy, in the same year. However, the marriage was not smooth with Hayward attempting suicide in 1945 from a sleeping pills overdose. She was rushed to the hospital and fortunately had a complete recovery. Her struggles with mental health persisted, despite frequent therapy and hospitalization. But meeting and marrying Floyd, without a doubt, made her life worth living. The two bought a 22-acre ranch in the San Fernando Valley and raised horses and cattle in general. Hayward also became involved in philanthropy supporting causes like the American Cancer Society in Motion Picture and Television Fund. Her life started falling into shambles when, in 1955, her younger son, Timothy Barker, died after contracting meningitis at the young age of nine. Then, in 1972, Floyd Chockley died of lung cancer, and these two losses were particularly devastating for Susan. She withdrew from public life and became increasingly reclusive, and although from time to time she worked in films and television, her passion for the art was no longer the same. In her later years, Susan Hayward suffered from several health issues, like two strokes that affected her ability to speak and walk. She continued to work on films despite these challenges, but her health went on declining. Eventually, on March 14, 1975, she passed away at her home in Beverly Hills, California, due to brain cancer. She died at the age of 57, and her death was a great loss to the entertainment industry and to all her fans around the world. She was buried at the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Cemetery in Glenview, Illinois, next to her late son Timothy. Even after her death, Susan continued to be celebrated for her contributions to the film industry, and in 1977 she was awarded the star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and her legacy continues to inspire many actors and actresses who follow in her footsteps. Her powerful performances enduring impact on Hollywood's golden age and her dedication to acting have cemented her place in the history of cinemas. And that brings us to the end of our video. We hope you had a great time getting to know more about Susan Hayward, one of the most impactful female actresses in the history of Hollywood. Please subscribe and leave a comment telling us which Hollywood star you would want to know more about. And thanks for watching.